This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, how would you feel if you could paint this image too? Well, I'm going to break it down into steps that are easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you learn not only the painting process and techniques, but also you learn about the tools within the app I'm using Procreate. But that doesn't mean you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. But within the app Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And in terms of the color profile, I'm using again on their default list, the sRGB, and it's the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the default brushes that come free with the app. So within inking, the studio pen, within artistic, the leatherwood brush, within airbrushing, the soft brush, medium brush, and possibly the medium hard brush, and within organic, the rainforest brush. In terms of the colours, well, I have pre-selected a colour palette suitable for this painting, and each of these colours, if you go down to the value section here, has a hexadecimal code attached to it. Each of these codes is down in the video description. You just need to type them into this box one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here and then you can piece it together yourself. Or next to the codes is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the color file for free to save you some time. And that's also the place where you can access exclusive content, extended versions of many of these tutorials, and of course support everything I do here on YouTube. And to that end, I really wanna Thank everyone that either in the past has supported this channel or is currently doing so. It's made a huge difference in my ability to keep doing what I do. So thank you. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do on my background is go to the first color, which we go on the color disc. You can see is pretty much white, but we're going to add it anyway. It's just a slight bit warmer than pure white. I'm going to stay on the same layer. Back to my colors. I'm going to go for the second color on the top row. I'm going to go to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to put the size of the brush up to 30% and 100% opacity. And just at the very top, I'll do a band of this. Again, stay on the same layer. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use the third color on the top row. But now I'm going to change brush. I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to reset it because I have previously amended it. And I'm going to tap on it again. And I'm going to go to the stroke path, spacing, and turn it up from 27 to more about 50%. And click done. I'm going to put the size of the brush up to about 10% and about 40% opacity strength. And I'm going to do just a pass at the very top. Maybe I'll do another one for good measure, like so. I'm going to stay on the same layer. But I'm going to go to the fourth color. I'm going to change brushes to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put the brush size down to about 5% and the opacity pretty, pretty low at around 10%. Then zoom in a little bit anywhere where we've got a little bit of a condensing of the cloud anyway. Aim for somewhere that's already darkening up and perhaps we can just push it a little bit further. Make just a hint more of a feature of it, but honestly, I don't really want to do too much of this. You can just tap it perhaps at the very top edge, a little bit more, tap it in a few times. So we've got a real combination now between the airbrushing, soft brush, and the rainforest brush, like so. It's quite a subtle element, it's going to be in the background anyway. And last of all, we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we'll just blur that in by sliding to the right. Not too much, maybe about 5% should do it, and deselect. And that's enough of a suggestion of the background sky. Go to our layers, and we'll create a new layer, layer two. Go to the medium brush within airbrushing, back to our colors, and we'll go to the fifth color on the top row. We'll put our brush size up to about 10%, and the opacity up to 100%. I'm gonna take it from this very corner and it doesn't need to be a straight line at all, down to just above the halfway point of our canvas. And then we can just go and very simply scribble that in. I mean, you can just drag, flood fill that area, save you some time too. 
then going to switch back to the organic rainforest brush leave it on the same settings we had previously but i'm going to turn the same brush down to two percent size and maybe 90 percent opacity and i just want to create a top texture here that is going to vary and just stop it being a flat edge there trees perhaps that just stick up some foliage just all the way across there something like this then we can go to the adjustments gaussian blur and just blur that in to about the well two percent should do deselect and then then on that layer i'm going to tap on the layer and activate the alpha lock there and you should see a little checkerboard visualization on the background of that thumbnail we're then going to go to the sixth color along on the top row back to the airbrushing soft brush 30 percent size 30 percent opacity and just at that top edge there just a couple of passes of that like so then just to smooth it in adjustments gaussian blur and blur it in to about the 50 percent just creates a little bit more of a gradient and a cooler area here at the bottom okay we're going to create a new layer layer three we're going to tap on the layer and put on clipping mask which means that we cannot go outside the area that we've already created on the layer underneath so even if we really try to with a vibrant color let's make it super apparent it will stop at that edge and it won't apply it in this area it stops at that boundary there even though it's on a separate layer but we are going to use the same color we've just used so the sixth color on the top row I'm going to go back to the rainforest brush within organic keep the settings we had on before 12 percent size this time and 50 percent opacity aim for the middle of our canvas press on quite a bit across the middle then turn it down to 10 percent aim for the, the gaps just above that press on slightly less fill in some more areas tap any areas that seem a bit sparse that's fine turn it down even more from 10 to 7 again go towards the top you don't need to do long sweeps you can just tap in that way you can control put it in the gaps and then down even further five percent and at the very top you can just do a few overlapping smaller shapes perhaps all the way across the top and that's just created really the effect of some trees in that area but we can add some highlights so tap on that layer and also put on alpha lock now go to the seventh color keep the rainforest brush turn it down to maybe three percent size 50 percent opacity and any of the trees in here now you can just go in there and continue to work on the top edge of them and it doesn't do it in a way that's destructive it just further adds highlights in a way that is also adding an increasing amount of texture to because we're still using the same textured brush but we're using a smaller version within the texture we've already created and that just doubles down on that type of texture and i think it can be really effective so we're aiming for roughly the top edge of some of those shapes now in some instances it might be quite subtle anyway that the shape that you've already created so you can't add a strong highlight on top of something that is only semi transparent it's only half there to begin with so you can't make it incredibly strong on top but it stops you being overly dramatic with your colors now and you can't really go too far with it so that's good so we're using default brushes in this tutorial but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level you could try premium brushes from brush galaxy Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. And you can access over 20 different categories such as fur, lettering, nature, animals and many others. So for example, at this time of the year, in autumn, in fall, a quick search of leaves gives you page after page of really useful brushes and stamps that you might want to use in your paintings. And they can be super helpful. Start now and get the first seven days for free. Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. And again, that pushes it even further. Textures within textures, I think that can be really effective. 
Now, if you're feeling like it's too subtle and you want to ramp that up, you can easily do that, slide and duplicate the layer. And you can see how dramatic that change can be. Now, you might find that it's too dramatic, but again, we can control that. We can go to the top version, tap on the N, scroll it down to 0% or 100%, I think somewhere in the center. So we've got 50%, definitely ramps it up, makes it nicer, works better. And then we can just pinch them together to merge them. And then you've got the benefit of ramping it up. I'm going to turn off the alpha lock now. And then I'm going to go back in with the rainforest brush. Same color here, seventh color, down to the 2% size, still at the 50% opacity. And this will appear stronger. So just be slightly more judicious with this. Just be a little bit more careful. But I just want to add maybe a strong highlight cutting through there as well. Just a little bit more of a, a contrast in the mix. Just something to catch the eye a little bit more so it's not too monotonous not too consistent you want to just break that up here and there a little bit just to give something for the eye to latch onto so it looks a little bit more random and not too uniform now if you feel like you've encroached too far down which i probably do now it's not very difficult to fix most of that detail is just on that very one layer so we can go to the transform freeform pinch it from the blue circle at the bottom and condense it up a little bit more. And I think that works a touch better. I'm going to create a new layer, tap on it again and put on the clipping mask. So again, it's linked to things we've already created. I'm going to change the blend mode on the N, scroll down to add, which means that when we add a color now, it's going to be much more luminous, much lighter in its effect. I'm going to go for this orange, so the fourth color on the bottom row. I'm going to have to switch to something like the airbrushing soft brush. Put it quite small, or smaller anyway, so about 5%. Low on the opacity, it's about 5% too. And then I'm just going to go along that top edge, and we just need to lighten up some of the things here at the very top. I want the, the sun that's going down in that area just to be really lighting up that top detail. It shouldn't look too dark on that horizon. Don't need to do too much of this. It should just almost be catching that that little detail, that area. And then I'll also go to the next orange, so the fifth orange, fifth colour rather. And then on this top detail, just to break it up a little bit more of that too. We're not going to see much of this, it's going to be behind other trees, but there you go. That should do. Okay, before we progress, I'm just going to condense some of our, our layers. So we've got layer three and layer two. We can just take layer three, tap on it and merge it down. Now all of that detail is just on the one layer. Makes it more straightforward. We've got the next layer. The blend mode is different. It's on add. So you can't really condense that down. You can't merge it down. So we'll go there and we'll create a new layer. We are, however, again, going to tap on it and put on the clipping mask, which links it to this layer, layer two. I'm going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to use the eighth color initially. I'm going to put the brush size up to 30% and the strength at 20%. And just from this side, I'm gonna bring it here and press it on at this side and then releasing it a little bit, that top area, release it a bit over here. I want it to be more over this bit because pushing further back, we're gonna have the effect of the mist just really kind of obliterating some of the details there. A bit more at the top. Doesn't need to be too much, but yeah, it is quite dramatic. I'm going to create a new layer, layer five. So on this layer, I'm going to stick with the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to use the ninth color on the top row. 15% size, 10% opacity, and just about the center area of our canvas. Do a couple of passes of that. Turn it down 10%. The bottom bit of that section, a line of that. 5%. For the bottom area, a line. Maybe down even to the 3%. Another line across. Maybe we should turn it up 20%. We'll do another line there. Hold it so it snaps to a nice straight line. Maybe another one. Good luck. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that to about the 20%. I'm going to create a new layer, layer six. I'm going to go to the white. Well, it's pretty much white, it's not quite as you can see here. Pure white would be more here and just a bit brighter. 5% size, I'm going to put it up to 40%. I'm 
run it across, hold it. If you're not confident in the level, put your finger down and it snaps there, doesn't it? Adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in. 20%, deselect. And you can always go to the transform and you can move that, put it wherever you, you like it the best. I'm going to condense those three layers together, just in the, the interest of keeping the layers as simple as possible. Go to the transform, freeform. And again, I'm going to pinch that up. I want to actually make it closer to our halfway point, like so. It's still a little bit down from the halfway point, but it's a lot closer. Create one new layer, layer five, end color again, with the soft brush, with an airbrushing, maybe 4% size, 50% opacity, and just at the very bottom part of that area, draw a line across again, hold, straight line, finger to get it horizontal. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in, 20%. Then I'm gonna to go to the smudge, tap on it, soft brush with an airbrushing, 5% size and about 25% strength. And I'm just gonna start pushing it up in some areas to create a slight more irregularity to that mist. So you can just swirl it in, push it up. So it's not too flat looking. It just has a bit of a life of its own there as well. Not too much, just a hint. And again, tap on that layer, merge down. Now I'm gonna to go to the wrench, add, and I'm gonna copy canvas, and then immediately the little paste becomes lighter, so we'll tap on that. Now you won't see that until we go to the thumbnails, the layers, and the entire canvas now is represented on that top layer. Now if I deselect it, you won't see it, but I'm gonna to go to the transform, keep it on uniform, and flip it vertically. Now you can see that it's flipped the entire canvas, which is basically just that top layer. I'm gonna to go to the selection, rectangle, and outside of the canvas, I'm gonna start my rectangle and I'm gonna bring it down so it's halfway into that really light mist, like so. So now it's just selected that area of that top layer. Tap on the layers, tap on that top layer, and clear, which looks a bit jarring. I'll just zoom out so you can do this better. We're gonna go transform, freeform, pinch in, from the little blue circle at the bottom. And that allows us then to move it down without losing too much of the nice detail reflected. You do tend to get a little bit of foreshortening in reflections anyway. Find a point where it matches up, like so. It doesn't matter if you end up with a line there, that can be quite useful anyway. We're gonna to go to the adjustments, motion blur. I'm gonna motion blur it to the side to about the 25%, deselect. Okay, let's create a new layer, layer six. I'm gonna use the airbrushing medium brush. Go to my colors, I'm gonna use the first color on the middle row. Put the brush size down to maybe 2%. I don't quite want it 100%, so I'll put it down to 80% opacity. And just down from that stripe that now represents our horizon line. So just a hint down from there and somewhere towards the center, maybe just a little bit off to the right of center. We'll do a little point there. Perhaps I'll turn that down even more to the lowest part of 2%, just so we can really be a little bit more accurate and detailed. And then from that point, I'm just going to do a kind of wobbly undulating line up and across there. Now I can do a straight line from here and hold it just as a guide, but we won't really keep it as a straight line. And then I can drag to flood fill that area, dial it back if it's gone too far. You can see it instantly flooded the whole area but I've not let go of the Apple Pencil and I can scroll it backwards from 100% threshold and you can see somewhere around the 80% threshold works better. Now it is a little bit jarring, but it's not a problem. We're gonna add other things to take away from that effect and even just go along the edge now and just sort of rough it up a little bit. First thing we can probably do is go to the smudge tool, put the smudge tool on inking, studio pen. Don't need to reset it, it's on the default settings. Put it to maybe Put it to maybe about 20% size, 100% strength, and we can just start bringing up some of that color and using it to drag and create some of our branches. The trees that are just in the back part of this section that sticks out. Don't need to really spend a long time on these. We're just creating suggestion of things that kind of sit there in the background a little bit anyway, and they're gonna be largely obscured. So that will do for the background section. I'm then gonna go 
to my brushes. I'm going to use the artistic leatherwood brush. Now I'm going to reset it. And that's how it looks by default. Tap on it again. And I'm going to increase the spacing from 17 up to about 40%. Click done. And you can see now that it's, it's quite spaced apart. I'm going to use the same color, but I'm going to put the brush size down to the lowest part of 2% and the strength at about 40%. And in that area now, I'm just going to start scribbling in some foliage, just suggestion of trees. Now I'm going side to side pretty much, but I'm allowing, I'll zoom in, just some clusters of that texture to build up there a little bit. And we're, really we're just focused on that bottom area. That's where actually you're still going to start, you're still going to see some of it, you won't really see it at the top part. So we're just really focused on this bottom area a little bit more. So I can allow it to bunch together in some areas a bit more, maybe on the ground as we get a little bit further up, get a thickening up of foliage perhaps, something like this. Then go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. We'll just blur it to about 3% will do. I'm gonna go to that layer, tap on it, put on alpha lock, back to the airbrushing, soft brush back to my colors i'm going to go to the third color on the middle row brush size at five percent and about 20 percent strength and i'm just going to go over that a little bit knock it a bit further back just to create a sense of distance when we have darker colors in this section that cut in front they're really going to push this section further back quite a nice effect like so we'll go back to the layer, turn off the alpha lock, go back to the organic rainforest brush, turn the size of the brush down to the lowest part of 2%, maybe about 30% strength. Stay on the third color on the middle row. And I'm just gonna start building in some ground textures here more in the foreground. Just some extra detail. Doesn't matter if you go over the top there a little bit. There's going to be some low-lying textures, leaves, foliage, plant life that will just create some little anomalies there anyway. So don't worry if you have been a little unneat. And actually it can be something that adds to the effect. It can be a positive a feature. Stay on the same layer. We'll go to the fourth colour. Same settings. Start to build in more variation of texture or tone rather and hue. Okay. We're going to go back to the smudge, tap on it, studio pen again, put it up to maybe 25% this time, 100% strength. And we're going to start bringing in some trees that are much more foreground. Just take that back. Now, if you press on a lot, you're going to get a really big shape. If you press on a little bit, you get a much smaller. So I'm going to press on a little bit less. So just here at the water's edge, I'm going to have a couple of smaller trees that just kind of wobble off like this. So. Maybe another one next to it, intertwines a little bit. Another one over here. So maybe zoom in a, a little bit so you can be more controlled, but you need to press lightly when you're having branches come from branches because if they suddenly go thick, when it's supposed to be continuing to get thinner, it looks a bit strange. So a thin branch generally will not produce a thick branch from it. It makes sense, it just won't have the strength to support it. So if you want to get the main branches in first, then I would suggest doing that. We get some larger shapes in here again, zoom back out. So tree shapes take a little bit of practice. So if they're not gone quite right to begin with, don't worry, take a little bit of practice sometimes. And we are going to cover them up with a lot of foliage. So if you're not too happy immediately, then yeah, don't stress about it. Not the end of the world. Okay, so once you've got some shapes in there, we'll then go and create a new layer and put it behind layer six. So layer seven now goes behind layer six. I'm going to switch back to the artistic leatherwood brush. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go for the sixth, Colour along in the middle row, 2% size, 40% opacity. And I'm just going to start building in some foliage. 
some clumps of foliage that just really sit a little bit further back from the tree shapes and masses that we've just created. These are going to be kind of more background colours, a bit more muted. We will have some more vibrant colours that cut in front and just catch the light. But these are going to be backwards of the tree trunks, set back, and we can just afford to let them build in a nice base colour. So we can just have some tufts that stick out on their own, maybe follow some of the branches here and there too. So we can follow the branches, see where the foliage needs to be. Now you won't always see the branches, but whenever there are obvious branches, then you need to have foliage really that kind of is there actually in connection with it. We can have it leaning out over here, perhaps over the water a little bit more, maybe dipping down even into this area. Little clusters and clumps. Getting the balance of textures can be a little bit time consuming, but this is where the effect is really built in. So take the time. Now, obviously for this video, I'm really whizzing through some of these sections, doing it quite quickly, mainly because I'm practiced and a bit more confident perhaps, but you can take the time. If it takes you longer to do this section or these sections or any of the parts, then that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Don't need to rush through. Just in the interest of time, I tend to go fairly quickly through the tutorial so that it isn't an hour and a half or two hours and is watchable. But obviously, if you're working on it in real time, you can spend longer on it. So we've got a nice effect in this area. I think that's starting to work. So perhaps I'll just turn it up from the lowest part of 2%, a bit higher on the 2%. It's not going to be dramatically different, but just saves a little bit of time. Build in some details over here. Let's go back to our colours. Let's go for the seventh colour along. And you notice now I've obscured a large part of that top area of the area we've already created, like I said. So it's really just this bottom section we were going for and the more distant trees. But we can just blot in some bigger shapes here now at the very top. It takes a few minutes to do this and that's fine. We're in no rush. We're creating art, remember? And who said that that should be a very quick process? I definitely didn't. Back to my colours, and we're getting towards the top. We're going to get some more vibrant colours that catch the light. So we're going to go for the ninth colour. It's quite a dark colour, but it is a bit more vibrant. Perhaps we'll turn it back down again to the lowest part of 2%. Um, we're just going to get some shapes here at the top. We're creating a top edge for the more distant trees. We may even go in here with vibrant colours just to catch the light, a little bit like we did over here. Let's just fill in some of these areas first. What we can do to speed up the process is we can go to that layer and slide and duplicate it, and it's just doubled it up, and it really helps jump it forward, which is great. That is a way that we can speed it up if you feel that it's just taking a long time. I realise that not everyone's patience is going to be at the same level, so that is a nice little way of speeding up some of the process. But like I say, I think sometimes you just need to take your time a little bit. Okay, we're going to go to the last colour on the middle row. And this is a background detail. I'm going to put it down to the lowest part of 2%, this top edge. It is a background detail, but we're definitely going to get some vibrant colours coming into the top area. Again, just create some little clusters, branches that stick out on their own. Scribble it in. It's not just about tapping. If you're tapping, it takes a long time, and that's okay. If you want to do that, but you can actually just scribble backwards and forwards in some areas too, just to get some nice clumps and shapes in there. So a combination of tapping and scribbling will work. Now this is just the background layer, so we're going to do layers on top of this, as I've said. This is just our starting point. Just in the top area here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to those two layers and pinch merge them together, a bit tricky to do. If you're having trouble, go to the top version, tap on it, merge down, and now it's on one layer. So from that layer, I'm gonna create a new layer on top of it, and then tap on it and put on the clipping mask, which again links it with a little arrow to that layer. And then on this layer, I'm gonna go in with the soft brush, airbrushing, stay on this color on the end of the middle row, and 
well, 5% size, maybe 10% opacity. And I'm just going to just nudge this top edge a little bit lighter. I don't want to do too much of that, but just where the sun is going to be directly behind, just create a hint that it's catching it and making it more luminous, just a little bit more. I'm going to go back to layer seven and I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to blur that in to about the 3%, just to soften it in to its environment a little bit better. I'm going to go to the top layer and create a layer on top of that. I'm going to go back in with the leatherwood within artistic. I'm going to initially use the end color on the middle row still, 2% size, 60% opacity. And I'm going to start building in some foliage that just cuts in front of some of the trees and the tree details that we've already got. And I'm using a general sideways movement for these leaves and foliage. I think that's the direction that seems to work the best. Now I definitely want it to obscure much of the tree details that we've already got. I think it's going to be most effective that way. I want this vibrant orange over on this side predominantly. Perhaps we'll change. Perhaps we'll go to the first color on the bottom row. Same settings, just bring that in. Some variation, lighter or vibrant. It's all about creating different textures, different contrasts, see what works. Perhaps we'll even go for the next color. Second color on the bottom row, smaller on the 2%, maybe higher on the contra on the strength, 70%. So it's really be, be quite bold. We can get a hint down into this lower area. I think it can work really nicely. Bring some more up into this upper area, perhaps. Nothing to say we can't bring a, a darker color over the top of this too, but let's just really get some of this lighter color in. Scribble it in if you need to, really condense it in. I'm not going to use this color everywhere. I think that using it more sparingly creates more of a contrast. I think it works better that way. Perhaps we'll switch back to one of the darker colors. We'll go to the ninth color on the top row. Higher up on the 2% again, maybe just, yeah, maybe some darker colors, just cutting over the top on this side. So it isn't, it isn't all one thing at all. Some things that cut in front up here as well. Lower on the 2%, maybe some foliage that just, again, just cuts in front over at this side. There isn't really a right and wrong in this, but if you try to follow roughly what I'm showing you, I think you'll start to create some effects that work nicely. Bring some of these darker tones up into this area. So we've got a background area that's really catching the light, but there's nothing to stop us having some details that just cut in front that are darker and create variation of levels and texture. Let's go to the third color on the bottom row and create some even stronger highlights in this area. I think I'm going to go back to the tree branches layer, zoom in. I think we should go in more positively with the inking studio pen and perhaps with the second color on the middle row down to a lower size at 10%, 100% strength. And it's going to be underneath some of the foliage now, but it's going to be an important way of just connecting it all together. Some really subtle thin branches that just tie it together a little bit better. I just kind of thread between some of these different areas and justify the fact that there's foliage there because without branches really it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a huge amount of foliage really you need the the branches to actually support all the foliage so get in there add some more details if necessary darken up some of the branches even Have some branches that just cut across, perhaps from trees that are just off the edge of the canvas that you can't see, but you can see the branches jutting in there. There's going to be some areas where you can barely see just the hints of branches cutting through, but you know that doesn't mean that they're not important. It's still going to have an impact. Subtlety is sometimes the thing that just really sells an image. So just because it's subtle doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Be easy to say well it's only a slight detail i won't bother but actually it can be the little details that really make it an image work so spend the time get the smaller things in place maybe some things from the ground there that are just growing up for example
I'm going to go back to layer 7, back in with the Leatherwood brush with an artistic. I'm going to go for the third colour on the middle row, 2% size, 70% opacity. And yeah, I'm just going to continue to add more foliage in here. We've got some of the really nice bright colours, but I think we need just a few more darker, more subdued areas just to really underpin what we've already got. I think it's going to set off the more vibrant details even better then. Again, something around the ground level details can really work as well. We mustn't miss out on these darker areas. If you go nothing but the more vibrant colours, it, it, it's just too much. So you need the more muted areas to really sell that nice contrast. Back up to layer 9. Same brush, last colour on the middle row. Just some areas up here that just need a little bit more attention. I think I might just add a couple of more dramatic branches sticking out here. I think I quite like the idea of ones that yeah, just lean out a little bit more. And again, with the artistic leatherwood brush, something foliage to match it to. I just like it leaning out a little bit more. I think it works really nicely. Okay, so I'm going to go to that layer, the top layer, and duplicate it. I'm going to go to layer 6, slide, and duplicate it. And I'm going to go to layer 7, slide, and duplicate that. Now we've got a top version of layer 9. I'm going to take one of the layer 6s and put it up underneath that top version of layer 9. And I'm going to take one of the layer 7s and put it underneath the top version of layer 6. So we've got three layers there now at the top that I can pinch together. And then I can go to the transform and you can see I've got the majority of that tree detail there that I can just move around, which is really useful because I can then go to the flip vertically, move it over here. Perhaps before I do that, I'll just pinch it in a little bit. It's on free form, pinch it in a little bit more. And then we can just maneuver it down here to line it up as a nice beginning of our reflection detail. I'm then going to go and adjustments, motion blur to the right about 10%. Then I'm going to go to the selection, freehand, and I'm going to start just drawing around this section here, not including this bit of the tree trunks that are at the start of that reflection. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, motion blur, and again to the side, maybe about 15%. Deselect everything. Selection, freehand. Now just in the bottom area, I'm going to keep selecting. So not as much of the foliage this time. Adjustments, motion blur, slide it to the side, maybe about 20%. Deselect everything. Selection, freehand, just this bottom area now. Close the loop. Adjustments, motion blur, about another 20% or so. And you've got a, a slight kind of variation. So nearest the actual water's edge here, you've got a clearer reflection, but as it comes down here, you get more and more kind of blurring out of movement. And I think that can work really nicely. If there's any little bits that you think just too detailed, again, that section just perhaps just needs to be a little bit more blurred. Grab that, adjustments, motion blur, blur it in a bit more, however you feel. Perhaps we should even go in with the Gaussian blur and blur that in a bit more. 5% or so. Deselect. That works a bit better. Now we're going to do a similar trick to what we did before. So we're going to go back to the wrench, add, copy canvas and paste. And again on the very top you'll notice we've got a version of the whole canvas as a layer. Now I don't need all of it so I can go to the selection, go to the rectangle and I'm going to just grab up until the bottom part of this section here. So we've just selected all of that, go to the layer and clear. So the only thing we've got now is a version of the, the water that remains. You can only just about see that in the thumbnail I'm sure. We're going to go with the smudge set to the airbrushing hard brush. 2% size and 100% strength. And now I can just push in. I'm just going to turn it to its side so it's easier to see, easier for me to do. I'm just pushing this in like this. In fact, let's change that brush. We'll go to something like the Inking Studio Pen. 20% size, 100% opacity. And yeah, it's a little bit stronger. Pushes it a little bit more, which is useful for 
some of these shapes and ripples the airbrushing is a little bit softer the inking is really quite potent so you can push it left and right even not restricted to one way and very quickly you can really build in a nice effect let's turn it this way whichever way that you're most confident about creating this sort of sweeping straight line movement left and right backwards and forwards let's have a look at the effect it's already starting to work you can push some of it in even further having it closing up meeting in the middle those gaps why not so that's going to create the initial kind of movement of water for us which is really helpful but we don't have to stop there obviously that's just that initial part so i'm just going to go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing and i'm going to use the second color on the middle row and it it looks a little bit too vibrant there so i'm going to put it at five percent size ten percent strength opacity and we're just going to start to subdue this corner it is a reflection so it probably shouldn't be as potently vibrant as it is in the trees there so we're just a more subdued area down here just shut down some of that light i think that, that will work better and perhaps I don't know, more globally more all over we can just shut down a bit more of that vibrancy and light where i'm avoiding this bit obviously that's where the actual light reflection is so that should be bright but anywhere else i'm just making it a hint darker i think that works a bit better i'm going to go in with the third color on the bottom row still with the medium brush two percent size ten percent opacity and i feel like i just need to mediate this brightest of colors with just something that's a little bit warm so it's not just the, the bright white it, it's just got a bit more variation in there a bit more warmth cutting in here as well I think that works I'm going to turn it down to the lowest part of two percent maybe about 20 percent opacity and then we can just have some broken pieces that are coming in there as well perhaps even lower on that size into the one percent bring some of this across break it up a little bit a few little touches up here as well doesn't take a, a huge amount just to bring in this effect maybe there's just some little ripples in the water that are bringing out catching the light a little bit more too likewise it can bring bringing in a darker color so probably better to just grab whatever color happens to be here on your scene rather than going to the color palette sometimes you just you pick the local color and it will guide you better again we can just bring some of these darker colors into the mix just create more of a gap here and there if needed whatever works in with the third color just some little points maybe even with even lighter color so we'll go for the ninth color on the top row some anomalies things floating i think some finishing touches we're going to create a new layer on top layer 12 stay with the soft brush with an airbrushing maybe go for the end color on the top row two percent size 20 percent opacity and i just want to go over that little line at the very top there go carefully hold it so it snaps maybe go over it a few times try to be neat just really want to kind of get rid of that line really i can blur it in if i go over it a few times that will help adjustments gaussian blur gaussian blur so i've been calling it gaussian blur for a long time and it, it turns out that maybe it's gaussian blur i'm not too sure i've tried to change it to gaussian blur but i do tend to forget and keep calling it gaussian I kind of like the way Gaussian sounds better than Gaussian, but there you go. I think it is Gaussian blur, so I'll try to remember. I think I prefer that line there. I think I prefer to have a bit more of a division here, so I'm just doing this more roughly. A bit more of a division. Perhaps I'll backtrack that. Keep it down at the 1%, maybe down to the 15%. And bring in this in more subtly. Bring in a slight more curve here. A bit more broken, perhaps. Make some nice line across there for where it meets there and then back up five percent size and well maybe quite low ten percent and i can just go over this area just make this bit of the reflection a little bit lighter so really it focuses our our eye up there a little bit more i think that probably works a bit better back to a darker color maybe this second color on the middle row two percent size forty percent opacity maybe in fact let's even lower on that so one percent maybe just a couple of anomalies there that are cutting out like so 
think it looks a little bit too empty unless you have something maybe just an odd thing sticking up here we don't need to explain what it is maybe just a, a branch that's emerging with its reflection again just some anomalies in the mix looks a little bit sterile unless you have something else in the mix there too still in the two percent may put it down to 15 percent opacity and probably just need to build in some stripes here at the side just to further enhance the, the ripples a little bit in the water, not too many. Something like that. And then, yeah, just a few more at the side like that as well. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Do leave me a comment, suggestions about what you want to see next from me. Subscribe and I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.